First time somebody let me do that on a movie. It was so exciting. <laughs> Here, you do it for us. Yeah. John C. Riley stars in the new movie, The Sisters Brothers. I hate you. Stop pretending and spare me the I don't remember routine. You hit me in public, Charlie. So as sure as you're looking at me right now, I'm leaving. We sat down to talk to him about all kinds of things. This is not really a Western. I mean, we, we use, we have horses and guns and whiskey and all the things you see in, in Westerns. But um, I think one of the beautiful kind of optimistic points that Jacques makes in the film is that even the worst of us can transform. No matter what we were before, human beings have the ability to transform if they have the will to do it. Do you consider yourself mainly a musical actor, a theater actor, a comedy actor, a dramatic actor, or what? The difference between comedy and drama is not all that different. I mean, I've had, I've gone to funerals and had huge laughs with people, right? Those are, those are moments when people want to laugh, you know? And that's, to me, the truth about life. It's not just all comedy or all drama. It's that, it inter you know, every two seconds it's flipping back and forth. You go from a moment of joy somewhere and then you remember, oh, I wish my mom could be here to see this. You know, like, that's the human experience. Some of the blurbs around this film say that it's about what it means to be a man. And I'm wondering what you think we can learn from masculinity from two assassin cowboys who are a little bit off running around in 1851 in the gold rush. Yeah, that's, that's kind of one of the surprising things about the reaction to the film is people are talking about like this idea of the masculine identity and there's a lot of gender talk in the world right now and um, I have to say when we're making the film I wasn't thinking that at all. I was just thinking I'm Eli's sisters, that's my brother, I have to protect him. It's been really gratifying actually to have people bring up things like uh, issues of masculinity and what it means to be a man. And one of the things people p point out too about the film is like, wow, uh, you show such sensitive men in the movie. Like, isn't that, that's, it's a real, uh, it's, it's a revelation in a Western to see that men are sensitive. And my reaction to that is like, well, every man I know is sensitive. Every single one. You know, they might posture as being macho or puffing themselves up or whatever, but often those guys are the most sensitive. And the, and the religions of the world, the extremist religions of the world, whether it be Christianity, Judaism, uh, you know, um, Islam, they, these most extreme versions of those religions rely on the subjugation of women. Let's call it what it is. They do. And so that, to me, is the central imbalance of the world. I think a lot of men, myself included, like to believe the best. You know, we like to believe, like, well, that couldn't be. You know, like, I never experienced a casting couch. And then as these stories come out, you, even, you know, a lot of men in Hollywood are going, oh, my God, like, it was that bad? And you wouldn't know it was that bad unless you were a 19-year-old girl coming onto a movie set. You wouldn't know it. So it's really, it's been a very, really valuable thing for men to know the truth of it, to know. And, you know, it's been an incredible moment for women, the bravery of these women to come out, put themselves on the line and say, hey, this is not okay. I mean, I personally believe that the truth of it is, and we're supposed to be talking about the movie today, but it's the Washington Post. It's all Post. part of Come it, on. too. We got a little heavy here at the I, Post. I, so. I personally believe that, that human beings are, mm -hmm. all of us are different um, percentages of male and female. You know, I personally feel like about 51% male, 49% female, like inside. I might not look that way. Or you might not assume that from the roles you see me play or whatever, but that is how I feel. I tend not to sort of pontificate very much publicly, and I certainly don't let my characters pontificate. Your characters don't turn to camera and go, <laughs> vote for whoever in 2020. <laughs> no, Are you running they don't. for president in 2020? No, that's, 2024? that is a job I'm definitely not qualified for. But maybe that's, uh, maybe qualifications are underrated right now. <laughs> Anything anyway. else spicy to say? Was that <laughs> like, spicy? I, no, no. Yeah. Sorry, only a, a moderate. Like Look, I'm a humanist, you know? Mm -hmm. And someone said to me, like, well, what, if you could speak to the president, what would you say? And I would say, I love you. I love you. I love you because you're a human being, and human beings deserve dignity and respect and care. I see people as not just the people they are now, but I see the infant. I see the infant Donald Trump. What about like baby you know? Hitler though? In yes, the baby Hitler game. too. That's a human being. Yes, I, I detest the things baby that Hitler. he did. No, but what if baby Hitler was cared for better when mm -hmm. he was younger? Maybe he wouldn't have done what he did, you know? So I think the future 
of sus the sustainable future mm -hmm. is empathy, is to reach out regardless of behavior, re re regardless of political stances, is to see human beings, because that is an apolitical thing. Go humans is apolitical. You know, we all should be, we all should be, uh, you know, rooting for each other. Some pretty good reporting there. Do you want to tell people to subscribe to the Washington Post? <laughs> you got to pay me for that. Okay. I don't do ads for free. <laughs>